the feds. An Air Force pilot and former Guam resident killed in a plane crash in Afghanistan. And at least one local lawmaker wants to close our borders to countries with confirmed cases of the coronavirus. Good evening and half a day, everybody. I'm Jason Silas, and these are tonight's top stories. Well, Jesse Blass has been behind bars since last September, but court documents made public today reveal that he entered a plea deal with Uncle Sam. The court documents state that Blas, who just today resigned as the mayor of the central village of Jotnia, pleaded guilty to accepting thousands of dollars in bribes from a federal informant posing as a drug trafficker. Here's more in our top story. It all started in the fall of 2018 when federal informant Brenda Kinian approached Zonia Mayor Jesse Bloss offering to pay him to use U.S. Postal Service cluster boxes to have meth mailed in from the mainland. From November 2018 through January 2019, Bloss admits to accepting almost $12,000 in bribes from Kinian to smuggle in drugs. The mayor was not only using the cluster boxes located outside his office, but his official government vehicle and his office for some of the financial transactions. According to court documents, the scheme ended in March of 2019, after Kinian stopped making payments and the mayor cut off access to the cluster boxes. KUAM asked Governor Lou Leon Guerrero her reaction to the village leader pleading guilty. I heard he entered to a plea agreement, but I don't know the exact details of what charges and what what crimes uh, was associated with the plea agreement. Any comments on him entering a plea agreement and pleading guilty to a court plea? No, I don't have any comments. No comments on Mayor Bloss entering a guilty plea and not feeling like there's a lack of leadership in the village, which is still without a mayor's planning council. What about the uh, lack of leadership right now in Zonia? As I don't do think there is the really a lack of leadership there because the uh, executive director of the mayor's council has put in people in there that can still run the operations and service the communities there and of course he is uh, being a responsible executive director so I think they've put in an, or, an organizational structure there to help move along the services that the people of Jotnia need and so we'll probably uh, they'll probably have to move very quickly for a special election and that that's the responsibility of the Guam Election Commission. Do you feel they're stable? Yeah. While the Magahaga feels the village is well taken care of, Executive Director of the Mayor's Council, Angel Sablon, told KUAM otherwise as he recently testified before the 35th Guam Legislature on bills introduced to ensure a situation like this does not happen again. And I've always said it was anything good that comes out of this Jonia situation is that it opened our eyes and made us realize that we need to make the law more concise. And I feel for the people of Jonia. I, I understand what they're going through. But there's also laws that we have to follow. As out of the 19 villages, Zonia is the only one without an MPC and now without a mayor. While Blas's case appears to make its way toward closure, there's no word on the status of another investigation that was mentioned during his September arraignment hearing. As we reported, an FBI agent testified about an active investigation that was underway into superior court marshals who were having sex with women who had active warrants. The government also said Bloss was a danger to the community and had connections with the Department of Corrections, where for a price he could get inmates and detainees out of jail for a period of time. Matter of fact, during his arraignment hearing, DOC Deputy Director Joey Terlahi's name was brought up about a separate matter. Terlahi, who was also a former Superior Court Marshal, resigned from his position at DOC a day after the hearing. Joey Terlahi is the son of Senator Jose Terlahi, who was a former three-term mayor of Zonia. The former Zonia mayor is scheduled to change his plea here at District Court before Magistrate Judge Joaquin Manabusen on Friday at 2 p.m. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Adriana Cotero. Well, Blas's hearing has been rescheduled from tomorrow to February 4th, which was his previously scheduled trial date. Well, as you now well know, the wait is over as Blas is now the former mayor as he called it quits from a prison cell. Chris Barnett has more. I extend my deepest apologies to the people of Jonia for the hurt and confusion caused by my current circumstances. God's blessings over Jonia always, Jesse Mignola Blas. Mayor's Council of Guam Executive Director Angel Sablon reading from locked up Jonia Mayor Jesse Blas's resignation letter this morning. As of today, there is no longer a mayor for Jonia. Blas's resignation letter penned yesterday, dated today, the same day he changed his not guilty plea. Blas now pleading guilty. 
It is with a heavy heart that I step down from my position as the mayor of the village of Jotnia, effective January 30th, Blas wrote. He's been behind bars since September of last year after he was indicted on federal charges related to accepting bribes to smuggle in drugs through cluster mailboxes in his village. But what about the Municipal Planning Council, the jailed former mayor appointed from prison? Sablan says if an attorney general's opinion allows it, that MPC will be sworn in. I'm hoping that the AG will come up with an opinion way before 60 days. Local election law calls for a special election to be held on the closest Saturday to 60 days after a vacancy is declared. The Guam Election Commission head Maria Pangalina telling KUAM the GEC board will meet Thursday next week to call for that special election. But how long will the winner of the special election be the mayor of Jotnia? The successful candidate will hold the office up until the um, uh, January 2021. Uh, the primary election, the general election, whoever is successful in the 2020 general election will assume office when the uh, in January. But what about the MPC Blas appointed? Now that the former mayor has pled guilty, is the MPC he appointed tainted? It's up to the to the mayor elect whether he retains them or he appoints new members. Sablan said former Mayor Blas has already received his last government of Guam paycheck. Blas's former administrative assistant will run the Jotney Mayor's office while Sablan will continue to handle the finances until the special election winner is named. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. Now, meanwhile, Maria Pangalinian says anyone wanting to run for the mayor of Jotnia in the special election must pick up a special election packet, but they haven't been approved by the GEC's board as of this time. Well, on this note, the Attorney General of Guam, Levin Camacho, released his opinion on whether or not former Mayor Blas had the authority to appoint a municipal planning council while he was incarcerated. The opinion's conclusion reads that although Blas was behind bars, his status as mayor was not changed because he did not resign and he had not been removed from office. Well, in other news tonight, very melancholy headlines as a Air Force pilot and former local resident was killed in a plane crash Monday in Afghanistan. He's since been identified as 46-year-old Lieutenant Colonel Paul Voss, formerly of JIGO. The Air Force has stated that Voss and co-pilot R Captain Ryan Fanouf died when their bombardier aircraft went down in Ganzi province. The cause of the crash is under investigation with Lieutenant Colonel Voss, a 25-year veteran of the Air Force, stationed at Langley Eustis in Virginia. He was on deployment to Afghanistan for Operation Freedom Sentinel in support of the 455th Air Expeditionary Wing. Also tonight, Governor Lou Leon Guerrero says a visiting general puts our island's National Guard at top five in the country. This as another anonymous letter about the Guard chock full of criticism has hit the press. Once again, here's Chris Barnett. The governor said visiting National Guard Bureau Chief General Joseph Langell had high praise for the Guam Guard. He was very positive about our National Guard and very uh, complimentary of the fact that, uh, you know, our enlisted National Guardsmen are um, very engaged and they're very active and participate throughout the whole world. He's mentioned areas that they're at. Just as Langell praised the local guard unit, another anonymous letter criticizing its leadership was sent to media yesterday. The latest letter calling out the Gov for not addressing previous letters' concerns. You chose not to act on these letters and instead you left it up to your appointed leader and her team. Our anonymous letters have been mocked and made to seem like because of their anonymity, the words were not worth the paper they were written on. A portion of the letter reads, The reason we cannot identify ourselves is that we have families to take care of and support and bills that we need to pay, it said. The anonymous letters have criticized Adjutant General Esther Agagi's leadership and command staff. They've also said there's a climate of fear and retaliation is a reality. It's so sad to come to work because we always have to wonder, am I next? Am I being moved? What did I do this time? The letter reads. The governor refused to meet with guard staff, although she had met with prison staff who also wrote anonymous letters critical of former prison director Samantha Brennan. While there was much speculation about Lengel's visit, especially since he was accompanied by the Guard Bureau's top lawyer in general, Chris Refrano, the governor and her staff have said the courtesy visit was just that, a courtesy visit. And while some may question the timing of that visit, 
The governor said there's a reason Leng Yell came when he did. He is um, leaving, retiring in summer, and he just wanted to make his uh, final rounds to the National Guards and um, I guess wanted to update me uh, with our uh, National Guard uh, situations. The governor had written General Yang Yao last year asking if he would allow Tag Agagi to wear her state promoted rank of colonel on her federal uniform, even though she is recognized federally as a lieutenant colonel. The general denied the governor's request, but the reason why was hidden because Adeloup heavily blacked out Lang Yao's rejection letter before releasing it to the media. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. Well, with more than a dozen war claims checks now having been cut and distributed, Adeloupe is announcing that since the opening of the Guam War Claims Processing Center in Timuning, more than 600 adjudicated claims have now been processed. Additionally, homebound services for war claims processing has begun. Claimants in need of homebound services can schedule a visit or email guamwarclaims at guam.gov. And let's turn to the latest with the coronavirus now as nearly 200 Americans raced out the danger zone in China. And tonight they're in isolation at a military base outside L.A. that's being tested for the deadly virus. There are reportedly hundreds of Americans still stranded near ground zero as CBS News has learned airlines from around the world are either suspending or drastically cutting flights to China, including major U.S. carriers such as American, Delta and United, as the Trump administration weighs a temporary ban on all flights there. The death toll worldwide has jumped to nearly 170, with more than 7,000 people infected. It is now bigger than the deadly SARS outbreak in 2003. Well, here at home, Vice Speaker Tilini Nelson is requesting the Guam airport to suspend all incoming flights from countries that have confirmed or suspected cases of the coronavirus until a local mitigation plan is in place. As chairperson of the Committees on Air Transportation and Education, the Vice Speaker has also scheduled a joint oversight hearing for February 6 for the airport and DOE, in which she'll discuss the preventative measures and response to the threat of coronavirus. There are no confirmed cases of the coronavirus on Guam, but there are, as I said, confirmed cases in places such as China and Japan. Well, the governor, in the meantime, will host a briefing for lawmakers and mayors about the coronavirus at noon tomorrow at Homeland Security and the Office of Civil Defense. I don't know all the details, but I do know that uh, there's going to be a briefing given to the senators so they can have uh, much uh, better information and about the coronavirus and uh, to be able to be better informed. So they are going to have a briefing for the senators. Health Committee Chairperson Senator Therese Terlahi requested senators pause their current January session to invite the governor to provide an update. Well, GVB Acting President and CEO Bobby Alvarez response plan, adding the concern and priority is the health and safety of our island and protocols in place. He says even before visitors come here, they are screened at airports from our source markets. He says if flights are indeed suspended, they are also concerned about the livelihood of more than 21,000 men and women and their families who are at the heart of the tourism industry and how that may affect the island economy. Well, although there are no cases of the Coronavirus in the CNMI, the governor there says an executive order declares a state of significant emergency. It also establishes response, quarantine and preventative containment measures. Palau and the Marshals have already implemented travel bans from mainland China because of their isolation and capacity limitations dealing with communicable or infectious diseases. Locally, public health, along with emergency stakeholders, continue to meet to prepare for the potential arrival of the coronavirus. They've held meetings with key stakeholders to establish a consensus on best practices to keep the coronavirus off Guam and discuss emergency protocol in the event a patient does test positive. Well, also tonight, for the first time in the event's history, the True Grit Tournament will be canceled, according to Guam Rugby Club, as it's forced to call off the event annually in March because of the revoked assets to Weddingale Field in Dededo. The GRC board says they were denied access to the field because of a conflict with the Howells Angels Football Association as a turf war between the two organizations has been ongoing for more than a decade. Please stay tuned. We are back right after this. Get up to the minute news plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app available at the App Store now. Hot of the day, I'm in the club. Hot of the day, welcome to Two Lovers Point. 
Half a day, I'm in the club. It makes myself and it makes my team members very proud to work for an organization that has been on island for many years with its focus on reliability, dependability, and commitment to the communities that they operate in. Matson's a great corporate citizen to the community. We all benefit from any sort of environmental commitment we make. One of the ways that we do that is with our Adahi Utano program. There's action behind it, and so action breeds commitment. With the Kaimana Gila coming to Guam, this brings a new age and modernization to the island. It's exciting for me because it's a brand new ship and we can carry more freight into the island. It just shows growth for Guam and Micronesia. Matson would be nothing without its customers and we hope to continue to serve you for decades to come. Rananim, it is Senator Clint Rogel. Soon the 2020 Census of Guam teams will be visiting your homes. Let's all help them collect the information they need to create more jobs, better education, and accessible health care for our clans, our families, and our fellow Micronesians. In the kitchen, John Wesson, on the long Guam, and the pong poep, si poep, wal fite le makalong lonai maken itayen chochon aramas. Together, we can lift each other up and help shape a better future for all. Kineso chapur. It's a special delivery to your inbox every week with your KUAM News Roundup, program advisories, and promotions. Sign up for the weekly KUAM Digital Digest today on KUAM.com. A new study from UOG shows the local economy remained flat last year as a continuing drop in business spending was offset by record tourism arrivals and increased military spending. Here's Nestor Lacanto. Flat is good, says Jesse Kenga of UOG's Regional Center for Public Policy. He says according to their study, Guam's economy in 2019 showed no growth, despite predictions for a slight downturn compared with the previous year. That's because of a boost from the usual drivers, tourism and federal spending. It's good to see that uh, the Japan market has made a good rebound. In fact, uh, 2019 was a very good year for visitor arrivals record-breaking 1.63 million visitors. We saw in 2019 that the National Defense Authorization Act actually provided a large increase in funding for Guam and Guam projects. Uh, in comparison to FY18, we saw just for the projects alone a $93 million increase in funding. And the economic forecast for 2020, Kenga says much of the same. Hopefully with continued growth in the tourism market, will help uh, spell hopefully uh, no growth to slightly negative growth of 0.2 percent. He says they're hoping an expected big drop in military spending of 138 million will be offset by new jobs from the Subaki Tower opening and the U.S. Census. Allowing our employment base to grow means possibly consumer uh, spending will grow as well. Kenga credits UOG economics professor Dr. Maria Claret Ruane and her research fellows for their work. We want to encourage everyone to, you know, download this report at the UOG website and, and see for themselves. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Laconto. In other news, nearly 60 representatives from the private, public, and civil sectors convened at the Guam Museum this morning for the launch of the Guam Green Growth Working Group. The group was established by the governor through an executive order and intends to develop strategies that will accelerate local sustainability solutions to global challenges. Governor Lulian Grail says the working group came as a result of concerns for climate change in this part of the world. To be sustainable, I think we have to focus on what is it with our food, what is it with our economy, what is it with our um, social issues, what is it with our ecology, what can we do environmentally to protect our waters, our ocean, our, um, our air, and also our land. The collective uses the UN's 17 sustainable development goals, including no poverty, zero hunger, gender equality, and affordable and clean energy, among others. Building upon the partnership Guam has with the local 2030 Islands Network and Alliance advancing locally and culturally driven models for sustainability. The representatives spent the day in working groups to determine exact objectives that we as an island will work on to meet developmental goals. 
Well, senators spent several hours today questioning Democratic House managers and the president's defense team. The issue of whether to call witnesses to testify hangs over the impeachment trial. Here's more. Attorney Alan Dershowitz put a new twist on defending President Trump. If a president does something which he believes will help him get elected in the public interest, that cannot be the kind of quid pro quo that results in impeachment. Senators began their allotted 16 hours over two days to question President Trump's lawyers and impeachment managers. Nixon was going to be impeached for far less obstruction than anything that Donald Trump did. Lead House Manager Adam Schiff pushed back again on the Republican claim that removing the president is a subversion of democracy. It is not voiding the last election, it is protecting the next election. The most unsettled question remains calling witnesses. Any conclusion that doesn't allow witnesses and documents is going to make the president's acquittal, if that should happen, worth very, very little. Zero. Senate Republican leaders are trying to block witnesses and new documents. If witnesses are called by the House managers through that motion, well, the president's counsel would have the opportunity to call witnesses as well. But a split within Republican ranks could open the door to testimony. I'd like to hear from John Bolton because I think there are questions that I have that he could answer. The administration is also moving to block the former National Security Advisor's new book from being published. CBS News obtained this letter from the President's National Security Council to John Bolton's lawyer, saying the manuscript contains top secret level classified information that may not be published or otherwise disclosed. If senators split on the witness issue, Chief Justice John Roberts would have to decide whether to cast a tie-breaking vote. Bolton's lawyers say he responded to the letter, adding the team does not believe any of the information could reasonably be considered classified. Back to news about Guam, truly raiders that care. Last week, a pair of siblings raised funds to help koalas, kangaroos, and other animals that were hurt in the Australian bushfires. Our Jonah Gancharfer sat down with them for an update. It's been a week since 10-year-old Dion Tan and his little sister, 7-year-old Tia, held a donation drive at St. Anthony Catholic School, where the siblings both attend. The drive was to raise funds for the animals that were injured as a result of the bushfires throughout Australia. We were watching the news on TV and we saw animals and animals and koalas qual and kangaroos dying from the bushfire in Australia. So, so me and my sister were thinking that I think we, sh we should do a donation drive. We donated our... Christmas money to donate to Australia. With the support and encouragement of their parents, every morning before classes started, from January 21st to the 24th, the pair set up in front of the main office, collecting donations from classmates and parents. Every time they donate $20, we give a hug of a koala. On the first day of the drive, they had assistance from the Tamuning Fire Station, much to the delight of Dion and Tia. I was happy and I was so surprised. I was like, is there a fire going on? Throughout the week, there were visits from Governor Lou Leon Guerrero and Lieutenant Governor Joshua Tenorio, former Senator Tony Atta and his wife Annette, and even Gumamon. In fact, when the siblings ran out of the stuffed koalas, the folks at Gumamon stepped up donating Gumamon plushies. On Monday, the two, along with assistance from their principal, Robert Chrysostomo, counted what was collected. And after school, Dion and Tia, along with their parents, took the money to Bank of Guam in Haganya and wired a total of $3,010 to New South Wales Wildlife Information, Rescue, and Education Service Incorporated, where it will be put to good use. Dion and Tia started out with $200 of their Christmas money and had a goal of $1,000, which they couldn't have surpassed without the help of everyone's generous hearts. Thank you. Thank you, Raiders, the um, donate money to put the animals, animals in Australia. Australia. Thank you, and may God bless you. Last Wednesday, Governor Leon Guerrero wrote to Prime Minister of Australia Scott Morrison to share the selfless acts of Dion and Tia. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Jonah Gancharfres. Sports is next.
Green Energy Solutions, Inc. would like to congratulate GU Self Storage along with Calvo Enterprises in doing their part by going green with a monthly power reduction by over 80%. Power consumption before installation was 39,700 kilowatt hours. After installation ended in 6,221 kilowatt hours, which resulted in savings over $10,000 a month. GESI also offers LED lights, solar thermal VRF air conditioning, and solar photovoltaics. Visit our website and let us help you save. Shell's Million Miles Giveaway is back, and we're giving 100,000 United Mileage Plus miles to 10 lucky winners. You can jet off to Japan, break away to L.A., or even sightsee in Paris. So, how do you make a getaway? Just use your Lucky 7 card when you fuel up with 7 gallons or more, and you're automatically entered to win. Fuel up at your nearest Shell station today and start planning your new adventure. No purchase necessary. Some conditions apply. See store for details. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. We get the show started tonight with this week's Game Changer segment. Check it out. FD's Isaiah Pelkey Jr. started playing organized basketball at the age of four and represented Guam as a member of the junior national team when he was in the eighth grade. Isaiah represented Guam in the FIBA Asia three-on-three -three tournament in Malaysia and was the youngest player to suit up for a national team. He played on the JV squad his freshman season and took home MVP and Defensive Player of the Year awards from FD. As a sophomore, Pelkey was selected as Rookie of the Year from FD made the varsity team. Last year, uh, junior season, uh, getting my like, getting my first uh, real look at varsity basketball starting. You know, I thought I wanted to improve on my shot and you know, coming into my senior season, I really wanted to make that one of my staples of my game. The Friars have won back-to-back -back tournament championships this season. After winning the GSPM Boys preseason title, FD took the Kanto Classic Invitational Held in Japan. You know, we're looking forward to having fun. You know, this is a whole new squad, and you know, after this Japan trip, you know, we got a little bit tighter. We got to spend a lot of time together, and you know, the expectations is, yeah, we want to chip. Isaiah has had a lot of time to think about last year's Double I Double A G Boys High School Basketball Championship game, losing to the St. Paul Warriors in the finals. The senior point guard slash shooting guard is one of the leaders on the varsity team, looking to make another run at the title. Worked so hard, and you've got so far. And it sucks, so I mean, everyone was super motivated and you know, with like all these passings, Thompson, Xavier, Roth, Joey Santos, and it was just extra motivation and being a senior, you know, it's our last year to finally leave our stamp on in school and uh, hang one of the banners behind me. As one of the captains on the team and having the responsibility of handling the ball, Isaiah is an unselfish player doing whatever it takes to win. If I have to score zero points, get 10 assists, I'll do that. If I have to score 20 and get stops, I'll do that. But, you know, I, I like passing the ball more because it's, it's more fun getting your teammates involved and it forms a better chem. When it comes to school and giving back to the community, he's all in. He's the NHS president, a member of the Songfest committee, and donates his time to the Santa Teresita Church. If you're at Father Duenis, you know, student athlete and student comes first in that saying. And here at Father Duenis, we don't take days off. Even if there's a game or anything like that, we're still in school, we're grinding. Thompson had a saying, you know, basketball don't mean anything if your character is trash. Father Duenas is a school of men and they prepare us to be men after here. Whether cleaning up roadside or on the beach, lending a hand at Relay for Life or Special Olympics, Isaiah is following in his family's footsteps and representing the island as a member of Team Guam. And that's what makes him a game changer. As NBA players, fans, and those around the world continue to mourn the loss of Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and the seven others who lost their lives in the helicopter crash, KUAM Sports caught up with Bank of Guam men's national basketball team coach EJ Calvo and a few of the players on the team to get their thoughts of the basketball legend. I can't say I was always a Laker fan, but I was always a Kobe fan because I always felt that he was a winner, and no matter what, uh, he was going to bring it and I really respected that. I, uh, I always tried to emulate uh, a lot of what I saw of him as a player 
uh, I think we're, we're one year apart uh, growing up and uh, I learned a lot from uh, him even after retirement that uh, I try to pass on to young players and, and players that I coach. And as a player, um, man, I just I'm going to remember just how, how much of a killer instinct he had and his uh, mentality of uh, approaching the game. And he's a, uh, like I said, he's a killer, man. And that's one thing I'm going to remember him for. He's one of the GOATs. That's the only person I really looked up to growing up as a kid. First player I watched, um, natural born Laker fan. Um, really is his tenacity on the court, his killer instinct. Um, you know, and his drive to be the best player. You know, it really motivated me to, to work hard as you know, as much as I can on the court um, and emulate whatever I can, in it, what he does in his game, um, you know, from the way he shoots, the way he puts the ball down, the way he, he acts. Uh, he was just an inspiration. Just a fierce competitor. I mean, everybody's sad that he's gone, but most especially is his, um, uh, not just work ethic, but how he fought through everything, through all the injuries, all the pain. He was able to come back and just fight through it. So part of the most memorable and touching it, like his Achilles, when he, ruptured, he hurt his Achilles, ruptured it, um, got up, you know, went to the bench, came back and hit two free throws. And um, last game, we can forget his last game, dropped 60 on Utah, um, just the way to go out, you know. Um, I think took the most shots in his old whole NBA career in the last game. So a lot of, you know, ups and downs. I was a big fan, favorite player, kind of helped me bring me into basketball. So be truly missed. Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years of experience. What is Whole Home Wi-Fi? Whole Home Wi-Fi spreads Wi-Fi across your entire home. Pods plug straight into the wall. No messy cables. They spread the internet from your modem to every corner of your home at full speed. Whole Home Wi-Fi doesn't just make your Wi-Fi faster. It intelligently adapts to your environment and manages your Wi-Fi 24-7. Based on insight, like the number and types of devices connected to your home. Whole Home Wi-Fi, powered by Plume. Learn more at DocomoPacific.com. Here's your Cold Stone Creamery birthday shoutouts. We have a stacked roster of birthday shoutouts to get to tonight. So here we go, everybody. Happy birthday to January 30 babies, including Zaniah Kigwa, who has a birthday today. Happy birthday, Zaniah. Layla Joy Chovis celebrates birthday number one, and her family says, We love you, baby girl, to the moon and back. The shout out comes from mommy, daddy, and your brothers and sisters. It's also a very happy and blessed birthday for Teresa and Iglesias. We love you very much. Say the Iglesias and Paulino Familias. Amaya Uggen has birthday number 13 today, and mom and the family are sending all of their love. And that's another case. Hail he Francine Gumatao Tao, happy 11th birthday to you, to our favorite sister. We love you, say all of your brothers. Happy birthday number 17 to Evan Joe Fidel Hamamoto Sablon. 
to our baby, Evan Joel Fidel. Enjoy this special day of yours and many, many, many more to come. We love you, boy. Say daddy, mommy, and baby sister, Riley J. And happy birthday to Jesse Sablon, to our dad and papa, Jesse. We love you, says all of your family. And a very special happy birthday belated wish going out to Joseph Flores Tenorio. This is a belated birthday wish, like I said, as Joseph was born on the 23rd and turned 68 then. He was born in Marizo, Guam, and we received this letter all the way from Rochester, Minnesota. So, happy birthday to you, sir, and everyone who had a birthday today. Be a part of the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club by going to KUM.com and clicking on birthdays. And please stay tuned. In the mix is next. Closed captioning is brought to you by Green Energy Solutions, Inc. Visit GESIGuam.com or call 647-8111 for more details on how we can help your business save money.